Hi David, thank you for coming down today. Uh, what's well. it feel like coming back 30 years later? It's very migrate? nostalgic. Uh, there are a few changes, uh, some not for the better, but there you go. Uh, no, but I mean, the square is amazingly still as it was then. And to, 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 to think that we're standing on the same concrete slabs that uh, Chris Reeves and Margot Kidder and the rest of the cast and myself were standing on and we filmed virtually as far as I can tell we filmed in exactly the location where the hot dog stand was Fantastic. so it's been absolutely a thrill to reenact my hot dog salesman although this time round I am a pizza salesman <laughs> all hail to pizza for sponsorship yeah praise to them yeah but it's been a, a, a great experience and I'm very thankful for it so what memories has this uh, made you relive coming back here Memories, uh, the memories I suppose are of the weather. The weather was at the time was appalling. Uh, we just had rain, rain, rain all the time. Um, and we had to keep waiting for breaks in, in between the rain in order to film the, the, the shots of Superman landing. So the, it was, the, the, you had to feel sorry, very sorry for the stuntman because he spent most of his time on the rig being hoisted up very, very high and uh, going through the shots for the, for the sake of the lights and then of course the clouds would come in and change the lights so they have to redo it and the stuntman would have to go up again then land again and say yeah that's fine then it would rain so they say oh, okay we'd have to wait and then the, the cloud formation would change the light would change and they have to reset the lights and, and do all the, the stuff they have the technical stuff they have to do so then the stuntman would go up again and he'd be blowing around in the wind and so it was uh, yeah those memories of that and the, the weather and and just how cheerful everybody was, even through all that bad weather. Christopher Reeve was really cheerful, although he had a lot on his shoulders because he was producing, directing, and starring in it as well, obviously. And Margot Kidder, who just got over a, quite a big breakdown, was happy to be back on the, in the game and playing a, a part of Louis Lane. So, but generally, everybody was quite upbeat and happy about it. So, yeah, lots of good memories. At any time was Christopher Reeve uh, hoisted up the crane at all? Did he ever take a, the plunge up there at all? Oh yeah, yeah, we did eventually. Yeah, for the actual shots when we when when the weather settled uh, after a couple of days when the weather settled, it, it looked a bit more sort of stable. Then of course he went up on the hoist and we went, we managed to get in the scenes. We had to repeat them uh, several times, which is the norm in a film location. We had to repeat them several times, and so yeah, so he had to keep landing next to me, and I, you know. Which uh, just was great for me because I just had to get to do close more shots with him uh, all the time. So it was great, yeah. But he, but he was, yeah. He was upbeat about it all. Did you get to spend any personal time with Chris? Any conversations at all? Yeah, because um, I asked him originally because in those days um, I had an Olympus 10, uh, OM10 camera, film camera, and um, and I said to him at the beginning, you know, because he, he he welcomed me when he saw me in the costume. In the, the, the hot dog salesman outfit, he welcomed me and he asked me several questions about where I'd come from, this, that, and the other. And then I said, "Is it okay if I take some, some films, uh, shots with the camera?" And he said, "Yeah, that's fine. So don't mind that at all. Take what you like." So he was very, very good all the time while I was taking pictures, and I was taking lots of pictures of him close up. And then when he get, he got to the part where he was doing his podium scene, uh, his speech. He, he just came down and he said, and he spoke to me first. He said, David, he said, it's okay if you don't do any more shots while I do this scene. Uh, so I just find it, I'm looking at you on the camera. So, so I said, yeah, it was your show. He, yeah, I won't touch the camera. And then when he done all that, and they got that in the bag, he actually came down and said, that's fine, you can carry on taking pictures now. So I said, oh, cheers, thank you. But I'd run out of film by then anyway. <laughs> so no right. digital. Back in the day of only 24 shots. Yeah, yeah. Well, 36. 36, 36 uh. yeah. 36, yeah. I'm 36, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, was, it was great. It was a nice chat. Because, uh, like I say, considering he had an awful lot on his plate, awful lot to do directing. It's, it's a tough job directing an action movie such as Superman when you're actually in the lead character yourself. Uh, so that's when you rely on the, the crew. Big bus going past. Yeah, that's when you rely on the crew. And fortunately, I think he had a good crew. It's just a shame that the special effects weren't um, had a bit more money towards them. They, they cut the budget from originally 40 million down to 20 million. Yeah, yeah, which just shows you. You might think it's a lot of money, but it just shows you how much money they do spend on special effects. Uh, but even having the cuts, I think he would have been better better off leaving some scenes out rather than doing them as badly as they were done.
maybe. I don't know, that's my opinion anyway. It doesn't doubt <laughs> much. <laughs> so on site, on the days you were filming, was it just Margot and Chris, or were there any other of the super actors present? Well, there was the, uh, the actor who played Jimmy Olsen. Obviously, he was around. Uh, Mark McCure. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm not very keen up on all their names, but yeah, he was around, and I think that was basically it. There weren't much more, and, and, the, and the young lad, obviously, uh, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah, he was obviously around. Yeah, so um, yeah, there wasn't much more of um, the, 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 the main character actors around at that time. So they were really concentrating on trying to get this scene done. It was relatively a small scene, but because, say, because of the weather, it just took so long. So it's shot over five days, you mentioned? Yeah, four or five days, yeah. Were these uh, full days, or was it like a few hours here and a few uh, hours there? Well, yeah, they were full days, but we see, we, we had to be here. I had to be here for lighting. Uh, Chris Fries didn't, although he, he was here anyway because he was directing, but uh, Margot wasn't here all the time. But I had to be here just so we can get the lighting and say, and things kept changing, so we had to redo the lighting and things like that. Uh, and the wind was blowing the, the uh, umbrella around. So, yeah, there was a lot of things, you know, re redoing and resetting, things like that. And then when you thought everything was ready, it wasn't, it changed, the rain would come down. So it was a lot of hanging about, but you're used to that on the film set. You're used to hanging about. Part of the job. So 30 years later, does Milton Keynes still resemble Metropolis? Well, it's still impossible to find your way around. So if a metropolis is like that, then it still resembles as it was then. I actually don't remember much because we had to go to a certain location. I can't remember where that was, but I, I drove to that location. Uh, it was somewhere on the outskirts of Milton Keynes. And then we were, we were put in a, a minibus and ferried to this location, then ferried back, then picked up the day, then ferried back was recorded. So um, I, I can't remember where that location was. So. As, does it resemble uh, using polite words? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. You're welcome. Good luck.